savvy supermarket shopper requires parents to understand fact from fiction in order to make those smart choices. And joining us today is Allison Rhodes, the safety mom, to share food safety and healthy eating tips that the entire family will enjoy. Good morning, Allison. Great to have you with us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, the safety mom is so important because really, above all else, we have to consider our safety. And so what are the biggest misconceptions first when it comes to beverages? Well, you know what? There's so much hype out there. It's hard for parents to really understand what the real deal is. Mm -hmm. And especially when it comes to some of these low and no calorie sweeteners. The National Cancer Institute has stated that low and no calorie sweeteners are completely safe. They okay. don't cause cancer. They don't cause illness. And in fact, for women, they could be a great weight management tool. And oh. that's why I'm so proud to have partnered with the Coca-Cola company to get the right information out about these low and no calorie sweeteners. I'm so glad you're saying that because I'll be honest I am a soda drinker and <laughs> I, I get teased a lot and people always say you know I have to watch it so I'm glad you're going to clear up some misconceptions let's first talk about the misconception of kind of differentiating between calories and sugar or fat well, you know what, once again, we, and, and when you say you drink diet sodas, everything in moderation is mm -hmm. fine. All of the items are fine. You really shouldn't have something that's off limits, like no fat or something, because for, especially for kids, if they're going to want it more. Okay. The key is to have a wide array of foods that they can enjoy and learn to love all sorts of foods. Hey, I like going home on a Friday night, having pizza, having a Diet Coke, <laughs> yeah. but you put veggies on top of the pizza. Right. You get your kids involved in eating, but it's about out portion control. These supersized meals, it's ridiculous. We've lost the concept of what a real portion is. Mm -hmm. And then the other problem is we're all so busy running around, we're not sitting down as a family together. Good we point. need to make meal time fun again. Shut off the TV. Don't let your kids come to the table with electronics. Don't let your husband mm -hmm. come to the table with electronics. Sit and enjoy the meal together. Savor the experience and that's going to set your kids up for a lifetime habit of good eating. I love that and you know I, I mean I think about even myself at my age going out with my family. They get so mad at me when I'm texting and, and it is. Right. It's rude. We've become rude and this yeah. is a great way to be together as a family and eat healthy at the same time and so why would you say it's important to educate the family about fat for instance? Well, you know, I think we all as moms have to be a good role model. And once again, there's a lot of misinformation around that subject too. Mm -hmm. So you've got to question, question, question what you see out there. Go to reputable sites like the FDA, like fooddoctor.org, so you mm. can really understand, you know, everybody needs some amount of fat in their diet. Once yeah. again, it's just overindulging. We've become this society of overindulgers. It's ridiculous. Exactly. I mean, and you're talking a lot about being together as a family and doing things as a family, talking things through. How would eating together, I mean, just in general, how would that promote a healthier lifestyle in itself? Well, I'll tell you, there's so many studies out there that show that families that eat together, mm -hmm. the kids have better self-esteem and self-confidence. Mm -hmm. You're talking about your day, you're problem solving, you're ha engaging in conversation around a mealtime organization. Good and point. that makes it much healthier for you. And it also just establishes and, and strengthens those bonds. And when they get into the teen years, you better have those bonds strengthened. Absolutely, yeah. Because like you said earlier, you're setting up the good habits at a young age so that they continue through the years with those habits and, exactly. and some of the habits we have to really get you know in line with not only are the portions but the actual food we're eating I mean when we talk about fat and calories I mean what would you say are the healthiest tips so that we can not only stay healthy but also stay in shape well, you know what? It's got to be active lifestyle as well. As I said, mm -hmm. when my kids come home from school, if they want to have a cookie, a cookie is fine. Have it with an apple. Mm. Balance those foods out. Don't make something off limits. And just, you know, moderate what you're doing and balance it with an active lifestyle. And mo that means moms, too. Absolutely. Now, when I go out and I look at the labels a lot of the times and I see, you know, let's say 250 calories but only 2 grams of fat or 10 grams of fat but only 100 calories, I mean, wh how, what would you advice to somebody, I mean, where should we look first when we're trying to balance our diets? Well, I'm not a nutritionist, but you really need to look at those reputable websites okay. like the FDA, like the American Academy of Pediatrics. They're mm. going to outline exactly what's right in terms of portion size for okay. your child and in terms of those calorie and fat balances, because for each person, it's a little different. Great advice. So for more information, you recommend what website? familydoctor.org and you can find more tips on my site oh, yeah. safetymom.com safetymom.com I love it thanks for keeping us safe and healthy and uh, we appreciate you coming here on New Mexico style today Allison thank you thanks so much and we'll be right back